So yeah. landing cool. sequences, Joe, you mentioned something about a plane at the beginning of the show. Yeah. Tell me about it. Ooh. Oh, you're segueing. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> I was I was still in I was still in uh, starship mode. I was like, wah, wah, wah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So hang on, I have somebody actually sent me this, and I want to make sure and give them credit. Uh, I should have had this up. Uh, but yeah, so this is from futurism.com. So scientists create jet engine powered by only electricity. Sounds impossible, but the way it works is it says this device compresses air and ionizes it with microwaves, generating plasma that thrusts it forward. So it kind of sort of works the same way that the jet combination of air and fuel does, but instead of using fuel, it just ionizes it with microwave and creates a plasma and pushes it forward. It says there was a prototype that was able to launch a one kilogram steel ball 22 millimeters into the air. That's the same thrust proportional to scale as a conventional jet engine. Oh, really? okay. I was going to say, that's not very high. <laughs> yeah, that didn't seem that impressive to me. <laughs> 24 millimeters. I mean, you got to start somewhere. We're going to the moon. Um, but yeah, it says our, our results demonstrated uh, that such a jet engine based on microwave air plasma can be a potentially viable alternative to the conventional fossil fuel engine. And that's from <laughs> Wuhan wow. University. We just keep hearing that city's name. Uh, <laughs> Zhao Tang <laughs> said in a press release. So uh, obviously, you know, we're talking about reducing emissions, reducing fossil fuel use. Um, uh, airplanes, the airline industry uses quite a bit. Um I don't know. Maybe Tim. Maybe you know the amount of fuel and emissions that come out just from a single uh, plane flight. It's a lot, hmm. but the idea of having a, a. I mean, this would. I mean, this could be a plane that could be run on batteries. I guess. I mean, I don't know what the uh, how much electricity is required and what kind of storage would be ne- needed for it. But uh, it's it's interesting. That's, it's an interesting idea. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I, that, yeah. I mean, that is huge. That's obviously one of the biggest. Uh, it's, it's not a very big polluter. I think globally, uh, the airline industry is 2.4% or something for CO2. But um, all, one of the big concerns is that it, it, you know, it's right there between the troposphere and the, and the stratosphere. So oh, yeah. uh, there's things that happen at that level that, that could be more damaging or have greater effects than they do down here at sea level. They don't cycle as quickly, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So I would, that would be fascinating. That, I mean, it, just in general, any technology we can find that can help us uh, move into a more sustainable future is, is fantastic. I mean, that just sounds incredible. Mm-hmm. There's a whole uh, uh, field here called electric aviation. Um, so it's kind of interesting. There's that one that uh, German company Lilium, I think it's called. And um, they actually have one that can fly. I think it's not, you know... It's early days, but it's like a two-person um, plane, uh, not propellers. It has its own. It's a vertical takeoff and land, and I think it can go 300 kilometers. So pretty good what distance, mean, you know, not what like mean a, it's not propellers. Are, are they, is it like ducted fans, like a a drone? It's got to be propellers. No. Oh, oh, maybe inside of it. Yeah, yeah. They're just um, ducted. Which yeah. Looks super cool. Yeah. Let me show you. Okay, there it is. I guess you're right. Yeah, they are propellers. Or, oh, or impellers. Sweet, though. <laughs> there it is. Uh-huh. It's like the Sonos so, of airplanes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. The German design. That is um, super cool. What is this? So do? weird looking. Whoa. Yeah. But they have video of it flying, um, and they've done some test flights, I think. Uh, yeah, super weird, but really interesting, like, that they can even do it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, um, as battery density increases, obviously, uh, yeah. that will be a huge potential. I mean, that's that's the biggest hurdle in so many of these things, I think, is just energy storage. And so mm-hmm. it's it's just really hard to beat, um, I, I don't know what you'd call it, combustibles, fuels, mm-hmm. like, you know, gasoline or, you know, jet fuel or Chemical RP1 energy, or whatever. Yeah. Like, we just don't really have another option that can have that much energy yeah so yeah but this is a whole field and these guys aren't the only ones i think they just have kind of the coolest looking one (laughs) um but yeah so that'd be that'd be cool i mean i wonder if you know 20 30 years from now we'll look back and be like oh remember when we used to have jet fuel (laughs) chemtrails remember when chemtrails were a thing everyone was afraid of 
the CIA oh, and I, I and five G. <laughs> we're on we're on ten G now. I wonder what ionized uh you know or if if you have like basically plasma coming out of the back though if that'll still create condensation trails and stuff just by rapidly vaporizing mm. you know the water molecules and turning it into something something and i i would be curious i don't i would assume though it's still better than leaving a trail of co2 yeah um and soot and all that stuff but and i did look it up the guy who shared this with me on facebook his name is matthew sloan so thank you matthew I wonder if there's other categories of Mm -hmm. uh, fuel for planes. Like, I know natural gas vehicles are a thing. Um, Like, I think in San Diego, I don't know if it's all of them, but a lot of the trash trucks run on natural gas. Mm -hmm. Um, And there's a lot of, uh, like, city buses and things that I actually saw. We have here in San Diego, maybe, I don't know, maybe it's just the one I always see. But there are a bunch of all-electric uh, city buses mm-hmm. um, and this isn't like the a trolley that has like a connection to an electrical line above it it's just like normal city bus running down the street mm-hmm. um, but I wonder if like yeah if you could switch yeah I guess you'd have to just do the math on, on the whole thing if, if there were alternative fuels that were that weren't you know like just pure electricity uh, and air but something that's more like natural gas or some other kind of combustible that's also mm-hmm. extremely high energy density but is has less of a greenhouse gas effect mm-hmm. i don't know well liquid natural gas and uh methane liquid methane have have been used and early looked at for for jets and stuff the only problem is uh especially well liquid methane i think and i mean liquid natural gas is basically the same thing i think you have to have it in really 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 high pressure to keep it into its liquid state you know, so you you can't use your your wings as your fuel tanks anymore because all of a sudden now they're getting really heavy and have to be more yeah. rigid. It's just all this like scaling factor where you you the complexity of it ends up being um, a lot harder than it's worth. But I think the the cool one for jets would be uh, like a a, a bio um, biofuel that's at mm-hmm. least green produced green and uh, yeah, like that's less sooty. I think would be. Well, some of these yeah. uh, these carbon capture companies like Carbon Engineering, I think Climeworks is the one that's doing this. They actually collect carbon out of the air and turn it into jet fuel. Yeah. yeah. Have you guys do you listen to um, Green Tech Media at all? Have you heard of them? I've heard of them, but I don't. It's like a, they they have like a blog and they have a bunch of things um, and they have a few different podcasts and one of them. So Mark Andreessen, if you guys are familiar with him. Uh, founder of Netscape, if you guys, you know, the old timers, mm. I remember what Netscape is. Um, Any you know, big time investor uh, in Silicon Valley and a lot of companies you 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 know of uh, had a big thing recently about like it's time to build and you had this like call to action and all these things, and it was almost like the most why don't they just thing ever for climate stuff. Um, but it sparked one of the guys at Green Tech Media. His name escapes me right now, but uh, to come up with essentially like what we would really need to kind of solve the climate crisis. Um, And Mark Andreessen was like, you know, there's nuclear. It doesn't pollute. Some say if we could have a thousand nuclear plants, it would be fine. Let's just do that. See? Done. Like climate change solved. Like was how he (laughs) kind of put it. It was kind of like the dumbest thing you've ever heard. But... But the, but it sparked the other guys that really know what they're talking about to, to do this thing. Um, and they got into all these really interesting different things um, in, in terms of, like, yeah, how it affects different levels of the atmosphere and the types of things you need. So uh, biofuels is, 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 is in there and some of those other things. So if you guys are interested, go check that out. There's oh, I'll put a link to it down there. But it's really fascinating yeah. to know. Like, I hadn't really ever heard of high-voltage DC power lines before. But I've been really digging into these, and it's kind of it's kind of mind blowing. So apparently, if you want to like send electricity across further distances, a alternating current doesn't work as well as direct current does. So, but then you have to replace what's there. Like it's it's like super expensive yeah. and crazy. Yeah. But it would actually mean we need far less energy than we need today. And so there's all these weird things like that. It's like holy crap! Like it didn't even. Because you're not losing so much in the transmission. Mm-hmm. Right. Imagine, like, we have a power plant, in, you know, in California, and it sends stuff to Las Vegas. 
-hmm. Like you have to go through, you know, a couple hundred miles of just desert. And throughout that, you're going to have to have substations along the way and all these other things. And it's just like ridiculous. So if you could have high voltage DC lines that could actually, you know, transmit much further, you would need less stuff and it would require less energy, et cetera, et cetera. Hey, thanks for checking us out, guys. I hope you enjoyed this clip from our podcast. We do a weekly show here on YouTube, so make sure to subscribe to Our Ludicrous Future, where we discuss all the things that are going to make our future totally ludicrous. You can join us here on YouTube or at any of your favorite podcast places. Plus, if you want to get some behind-the-scenes stuff and join a cool community, you can help support the channel at patreon.com. Thanks a lot. Thanks, guys.